Hey everyone, how's it going? This is Arindam and today we will be discussing about few concepts in finance which will help you judge and measure the performance of your investments in a better way. Now apart from being common terminologies used in finance, the reason why you should know this is these would help you in choosing the right mutual fund or in stock because all these concepts are associated with them. So first off we have alpha. Now before I go on to explaining alpha, let me explain what do you mean by a benchmark. A benchmark means a standard or point of reference against which things may be compared. So for upcoming actors, Amitabh Bachchan may be considered as a benchmark and for people who want to be good tennis players, Roger Federer can be considered as a benchmark. Now when it comes to equity mutual funds or the return that it generates, what would be the benchmark in that case? The benchmark in that case would be the return that is generated by the stock market index of the country, which in India is the Nifty 50 or the Sensex. So for the past 25 years, Nifty 50 gave an average annual return of around 11-12% to and this is the market return for this period and this is the benchmark against which all the returns that is generated by equity mutual funds would be measured. So what is alpha? Alpha is the excess return that is generated over and above the benchmark by any <coughs> investment which in this case is any equity mutual fund or any particular stock. So if a mutual fund scheme gave your average annual return of around 15% for 5 years and during that same period Nifty 50 or Sensex gave an average annual return of 13% then the alpha in this case would be 2% and this would paint a positive picture for the fund manager as well because he or she was able to beat the benchmark with that particular fund. Now obviously a positive alpha is very good because that means uh, that particular fund or stock was able to beat the benchmark and a negative alpha signifies that that particular fund or stock was unable to beat the benchmark. So that was alpha but that was just one indicator and you should always look from multiple angles when going on to analyze a performance of a mutual fund or stock and that is where our next item comes in which is beta. So if alpha was about return, beta concerns something that is equally important and something that should not be ignored that is risk. So basically beta gives you an idea about how risky or volatile a particular fund is relative to its benchmark. So beta gives you not the inherent risk of that particular investment but the risk relative to the benchmark. So what does relative risk mean? Now all the mutual funds and stocks are affected by an index of a country. So in 2020 uh, due to covid the index went down and because the index went down there was obviously an effect on all the mutual funds and stocks. But how much of an effect there was on a particular fund or a stock is what is determined by beta. So to give an example, let's say a mutual fund has a beta of 1.65. What this essentially means is if the index that is Nifty 50 or Sensex changes by 1%, this fund would change by 1.65%, which means that this fund is 65% more volatile when compared to the index. Similarly, if the beta was 0.8, that would mean that when the index changed by 1%, that particular fund would change by 0.8%, which means that particular fund is 20% less volatile when compared to the index. Cash has a beta of 0. Why? Because any change in the market of index would have no bearing on it. If you had 1 lakh rupees in your bank account and the stock market crashed, you would still have 1 lakh rupees in your bank account. But your investments in equities and mutual funds would surely get affected because the stock market crashed. To give another example, index mutual funds would normally have a beta of around 1 because their purpose is to track the index. Now based on the above relations, beta can take up any value. Now an interesting factor is if it is negative, that would mean that it's negatively correlated to the market which means if the market went up, that particular investment would go down. So beta can have negative values as well. Now one important point to note is both alpha and beta should not be looked in isolation but should be looked in combination when you're going ahead to select any particular mutual fund or stock. Ideally, for selecting any fund or stock, you should look for those which have a combination of high alpha and low beta. This particular combination is ideal when you're comparing stocks or funds and you want to select anyone. Now before moving on to the next metric, let me define two terms which is crucial for the understanding of that particular metric. So first we have risk-free rate. Risk-free rate represents the minimum rate of return that you can earn without taking any amount of risk. So the return generated by a 10-year government treasury bond is considered as the risk-free return because these bonds are issued by the central government. And there is almost no chance of the government going bankrupt and defaulting on these 
unless there is a meteor strike or something. This rate remains constant and is currently 6.7%. Now, coming to standard deviation, in simple terms, standard deviation represents volatility of your investment. So it tells us the deviation of the investment return from the average return of the investment. So to give an example, if I take a mutual fund and calculate its return over the past 15 years, obviously the return won't be stable, especially if it's an equity mutual fund. So there would be a lot of ups and downs in the return that is generated and the standard deviation represents these ups and downs. So a low standard deviation would mean that over these past 15 years, most of the time, the returns for that fund was much closer to the average return of the fund for those 15 years. And a high standard deviation would mean that over these past 15 years, most of the time, the returns were far away from the average. They were more spread out. So if you see small cap mutual funds, you would typically see that they have high standard deviation when compared to, for example, index mutual funds. Because small cap funds represents in small cap companies which are riskier and hence less stable and hence they have a high SD. So let's finally discuss Sharpe ratio. Now it's always a good thing if an investment gives very high returns, but what we should see is at what costs are those returns being generated because nothing in this world comes for free. There is a cost for everything and the cost in this case is risk. So what Sharpe ratio tells us is how much return an investment is able to generate for taking a unit of extra risk. So it's calculated as excess return divided by standard deviation. Excess return is calculated as your fund return or your investment return minus the risk free rate which we discussed earlier which is 6.7% currently. Now obviously the higher the Sharpe ratio the better it is because that would mean it's giving you a higher return against one unit of risk that particular fund or that investment is taking. So you can use all these metrics as filtering mechanisms when you're choosing a mutual fund. So for example, you can use the combination of high alpha and low beta uh, to select few mutual funds. And then again, from those selected funds, you can use the concept of Sharpe ratio to narrow down again to a few more funds. And finally, you can use information like who is the fund manager or what is the expense ratio of that particular fund or information about the particular AMC and using all that you can finally narrow down to two or three funds and you can go ahead and invest in those. Now one very important factor which I would like to highlight is all these numbers are calculated using the past performance of these particular funds and there is absolutely no guarantee that those funds would give the same performance in the future. It is important that you remember this because we are making this decision today based on what happened in the past and like with everything in life there is no guarantee as to what would happen in the future. So it's very important that you are aware of this and you remember this whenever you are looking at these numbers. The value of all these metrics which I discussed is easily available on the internet and I hope going forward when you want to invest in a mutual fund, you get to apply these concepts and not just select a fund based on only its returns. To know about why you should do an SIP, go ahead and click here and to know the method of investing known as core satellite approach, go ahead and click here. Until the next one, take care, see you and bye bye.